Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Start with a, a little nigun, a wordless melody this evening. singing we'll continue on page 11 with the words dodi li va'ani lo haro'e bashoshani my beloved is mine and i am my beloved who browses among the lilies from the song of songs which we read throughout the week of passover page 11 Shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. Happy Passover. Chag Sameach. Chag Sameach. For the ones who are really in the know, we say Moadim Lasimcha. And the ones who are really, really in the know, they know there's a special response for that as well. So the response is actually, it's a mouthful. Chagim Uzmanim Lasason. And that comes from Chagim Uzman. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Moadim Lasimcha. 
Chagim Uzmanim Lasason. It's from the line in Kiddush um, that we are joyous in our festivals, our uh, holidays, and our um, seasons bring us celebration. Um, so let's try it. Chagim Uzman. No, I see I blew it again. Moadim Lasimcha. And you say Chagim Uzmanim Lasason. Shabbat Shalom will suffice, though, tonight also. Um, it's good to be with you. Um, thank you, Emily, for joining us. For those of you who don't know Emily, Emily grew up here at Beth Am and, and is a regular on Sunday mornings in our Beit Midrash program. She helps our B'nai Mitzvah um, prepare for their B'nai Mitzvah. Um, and, uh, and also, occasionally, we get lucky, and she's got a free night um, where she'll join us as our soloist. Um, we will continue our service with a little bit of extra light um, and uh, some sweetness. So we'll uh, continue with our candle lighting, which is on page two. And I'd like to call up um, Lisa and George and Diane Rauschwerger to light candles and lead us in Kiddush this evening. in Kiddush. You can find Kiddush on page five. So let's see. I've got juice for everyone. service on page 20. The words of Lechado D. will sing verses 1, 2, 5, and 9, rising for that ninth verse and facing the entrance. Page 20.
Continue on page 28, words of Barachu. Page 28, or if you're following along at home with the full Sidur, it's page 146. Ahavat Olam, page 32.
Seated. It's my pleasure to call up next week's bat mitzvah, Julia Rabkin, to lead us on page 36 in the words of the Verhafta. Continue as we're in uh, Zman Cherutenu, the season of our freedom. We'll continue with the Shirat Cherutenu, I guess, the song of our freedom on page 40, Micha Mocha. Continue on side A, number three, 
uh, with our prayer for the evening, Hashki Venu, our prayer not only for protection in the evening, but throughout our lives for all of those dark and uncertain places that we find ourselves walking through from time to time. Page 46, if you are able, I invite you to rise as we begin the Amidah together. We'll sing the opening meditation together and then take some time for silent prayer as well. Page 46. Shemo ve'ahava 
Melech Ozer, Moshiach Magain, Baruch Atah Adonai, Magain Avraham, Bezrat Sara, Atah Gibor Le'olam Adonai, Nechaye HaKol Atah, Rav Lehoshiach, Morid Hatah, Mechalkel Chaim Bechesed, Mechaye HaKol Berachamim Rabim, Somech Noflim, Berofe Cholim, Umatir Asurim, Umekaye Memunato, Lishene Holy, your name is holy, and those who are holy praise you every day. Blessed are you, Adonai, the holy God. This is on page 259 or 377 if you want to follow. upon the world. 
Israel and its people no peace. I don't know about your experience, but Passover this year just hasn't felt as celebratory. Around my family's Seder table this year were many of the usual suspects, my parents, hi guys, my sister and brother-in-law, also hi, my wife and kids, they're still down in LA with my parents, my cousins from Washington State and New York, and my cousins who just moved back to Los Angeles from Tel Aviv in January. But this year, we also felt the acute absence of two people who sat with us around the table just a year ago, my cousin Matthew and my uncle Marshall, who both passed away in the last seven months. We began our Seder on Monday night with this poem, The Retelling, by Ellen Bloom Barish. At my Seder table, I learned that some stories need to be told more than once, to make us stop, gather together, and tell it aloud, though we have heard it many times before, so we remember. Every spring we read the same story of our exodus from Egypt, but it is never the same twice. Every spring someone is missing for work, move, illness, or death. Every spring there's a new mood or geopolitical incident. The annual retelling is like the sharing of all hard stories, never told the same way twice, never heard the same way twice. It is a crossing over a desert of shifting sand that allows us to see something that we hadn't before, as if for the first time. In so many ways, this year's Seder was the same, but different. We read the same text in the Haggadah, we read the same text in the Haggadah as well, but we are living a new reality. Dear family members are missing from our tables, and we feel more acutely the brokenness in our world. It is hard to embrace and celebrate Zman Cherutenu, this season of our freedom, when it feels like freedom is elusive for so many in our world today. When so many find themselves in their own Mitzrayim, Egypt in Hebrew, but literally stemming from the root meaning narrow places. There are so many living in narrow places these days. An embattled Ukraine, or the Israeli hostages still being held in captivity by Hamas, or Israelis living under the threat of rockets and missiles, or innocent Palestinians suffering because of Hamas's, Hamas's relentless obsession with the destruction of Israel, rejecting one ceasefire deal after another. And this week, more and more, we find that our Jewish college students are experiencing that narrowness as well. As college campuses across the country become the latest battleground for the spewing of hateful anti-Semitic rhetoric. The narrowness in the world feels like it is pressing in all around us and our universities. No strangers to protest seem to be experiencing a wave of unrest, hatred, and vitriol unlike the protest movements of the past. At the core of our Seder is the Magid section, which retells the story of the Israelite slavery and oppression in Egypt and of the possibility of redemption. It is centered on and begins with the four questions that we all know and love, asked by the youngest member of the Seder. But towards the end of this section, we read, in every generation, one is obligated to see oneself as one who personally went out from Egypt. Just as it says, you shall tell your child on that very day, it is because of this that God did for me when I went out from Egypt. Not only were our ancestors redeemed by the Holy One, but even we were redeemed with them. Just as it says, God took us, out, took us out from there in order to bring us and to give us the land God swore to our ancestors. This text reminds us of one of the most essential pieces of the Seder. We are not meant to just retell the story as some distant tale that happened to some far removed group of people. We're supposed to internalize it as our own when I was freed from Egypt, when I was freed from slavery, when I overcame the narrowness in my own life and experienced the expansive deep breath of freedom. This is not a distant redemption, but our redemption. 
By putting ourselves into this story, we develop the ability to approach our world with a sense of hope at the possibility of redemption as well. To approach others experiencing oppression or narrowness with a sense of empathy. Rabbi Scheiheld wrote earlier this week in his New York Times essay, what do we do with our pain? What, if anything, can we learn from it? The Bible offers a startling and potentially transformative response. Let your memory teach you empathy and your suffering teach you love. It is cri critical to remember the Exodus precisely at moments of horror and pain because it, because it is the ultimate reminder that the present moment need not be the final stage of history. The status quo, no matter how intransigent, can and must be overturned. Further, says Rabbi Held, we are meant not just to remember our suffering, but also to grow in empathy as a result. Our world right now feels like it is increasingly cast in black or white, feeling like there is less and less room for gray area and nuance. But we live in a world so desperately in need of gray area, of nuance, and of empathy. How do we grieve with our Israeli brothers and sisters and also grieve with the parents and siblings of Palestinians? How do we ardently support and affirm Israel's right to exist, to self-determination, to self-defense, while praying for an end to the ongoing cycle of violence? How do we demand the safe return of the hostages while not allowing ourselves to see all Palestinians as monsters? How do we support our Jewish college students and Jewish young adults, some of whom are at the receiving end of the hate being spewed at the, on so many of our campuses today, but some of whom might not align with our values around support for Israel either. Earlier this week, I came across this post by Rabbi Aaron Brusso that offers one possible path forward. He says, I will be thinking a lot this year about the fifth child, the one who tries to hold complexity, the one who does not want to let go of their heritage and loyalties and also wants to understand and sympathize with the pain of others, even the pain caused to others by those to whom she feels loyalty. The child who opens her mouth and nothing comes out because the cry of love for her people's suffering is stuck, wedged in her throat, against the cry of empathy for the suffering of others. She is the daughter of Pharaoh caring for an Israelite baby, and Abraham watching Hagar disappear with her son into the wilderness. She holds this all in her heart as she walks past the cries from the different camps of encampments for freedom, justice. She wants to love her neighbor and the stranger, but neither are interested in loving her. She has no camp amongst the encampments. She went to university so she could make space in her mind between the certainties and grow intellectually, to build rooms in her heart to grow emotionally. Instead, she found camps on campus. The wise, the wicked, the simple, the one who doesn't know how to ask, and the one in her dorm room holding nuance for which there is no reward and no camp. These four years of college are meant to be years of self-exploration, of discovery, of figuring out who I am and who I want to be in the world. They're not meant to be years of safety, of unsafety and uncertainty. I do find hope, though, in exposing our students to these complexities in a safe and joyfully Jewish space here at Beth Am. Here at Beth Am, and from what I'm hearing from colleagues at Hillel's on campuses across the country, we are creating not just a safe space to be Jewish, but a space to be proudly, complexly, diversely Jewish, a space to engage and grapple with big questions, to explore the complexities of our relationship with Israel, to celebrate together and support each other through all of the fear and uncertainty and chaos and hatred in the world, to scour our tradition to find the stories and sources of how our people have found hope through the darkest, most difficult times in our history. And there is hope to be found. It is there in our Haggadah as we reenact our exodus from slavery to freedom. It's a reminder that whatever narrow, restrictive, oppressive place we might find ourselves in this year, Next year, next year, the possibility of redemption and expansive freedom remains. Historian Yuval Harari, in his book, Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind, argues that one of the distinguishing features that moved the evolution of early Homo sapiens forward 
was their unique ability to imagine and articulate a vision of a world that could be drastically different from the reality of today. It creates the possibility of beginning to work together towards bringing that vision about. In a moment that sometimes feels like we're powerless, we can reach out to those we love. We can reach out to our college students to remind them that we love them, we're proud of them, and we support them. And we're telling our story and owning our story, which, yes, is the same every year, but which also embraces the myriad ways in which each of us are different each year. We not only cling to that hope, but are called to be active partners in carrying that hope out into our world. Shabbat Shalom and Chag Pesach Sameach. We'll continue <coughs> our service now with our prayer for healing, Misha Berach, on page 253. This week, we're sending thoughts and prayers of healing to Jenny Anderson, Sharon Baum, uh, Sharon Baum, Mo Budak, Bracha Bat Devora, Diane Denenberg, Mark Cohn, Ron Cote, Abigail Covert, John Devine, Toby Elman, Rudy Andrizi, Marty Gelman, Selena Glader, Moritz Huppert, Aaron Levinson, Sophia Palisban, Harvey Rabin, Bobby Rosencrans, Ron Rothberg, Charles Rothschild, Margie Sanders, David Baruch Ben Simona, Rona Weinstein, and Larry Wortman. If there's someone that you're thinking of in need of healing of body or spirit, I invite you to share those names at this time. Jack Burns, Michelle Taylor. So we turn to words of Misha Berach, page 253, in the middle of the page. for this prayer for Israel by Rabbi John Rosov. Eternal God, receive our prayers for the peace and security of the state of Israel and its people. Spread blessing upon the land and upon all who labor in its interest. Protect Israeli soldiers as they defend our people against missiles and hate. Protect the innocent among the Palestinian people that they may be safe and free from death and injury. Inspire Israel's leaders to both defend our people and follow the ways of righteousness and compassion. Remove from the hearts of our people fear, hatred, malice, strife, and vengeance. May the Jewish people scattered throughout the earth stand strong in solidarity with the state of Israel in times of war and peace. And may they be infused with the ancient hope of Zion. May our people be encouraged by the symbol of Jerusalem as the eternal city of peace. May the state of Israel be a blessing to all its inhabitants and to the Jewish people everywhere. May she be a light to the nations of the world. And we say together, Amen. Amen. Before we sing the words of Alenu, we'll turn to page 278 as we count the Omer, the period from the second night of Passover all the way through Shavuot, those 50 days between redemption and revelation from uh, the moment of leaving Egypt to the moment of revelation of Torah at Sinai. So we'll say together the blessing uh, in the middle of page 278, 
just so you know, today was the third day of the Omer, so tonight begins the following day. You can figure that out. Do the math. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kidshanu Lumitzvotav, Vetzivanu Al Sfirat HaOmer, Hayom Arba Yom Yamim, Hayom Arba Yom La Omer. Today is the fourth day of the Omer. We'll continue with Aleinu Lishabach on page 282. If you're able, I invite you to please rise. Aleinu l'shabeach l'adon ha'kol L'atet gedula l'yotzer rishit Shelo asanu k'goye ha'aratzot Elo samanu k'mishpechot ha'adama Shelo sam chalkeinu kahem This month, uh, our Tzedakah box our, for April is going to an incredible organization in Israel called Standing Together, Omdim Bayachad, a grassroots movement mobilizing Jewish and Palestinian citizens of Israel in pursuit of peace, equality, and social and climate justice, um, really trying to bring two groups of people who are so often shouting past each other these days into conversation to imagine a future um, in which uh, Israelis and Palestinians work together. Um, it is a small minority in Israel, but a vision that, uh, again, is part of the hope that we have for the future, a hope for um, peace and, uh, and interdependence as well. Uh, you can donate online on the Beth Am website uh, by clicking the Donate button. You can donate on Venmo, where Beth-Am or you can uh, mail a check into the Beth Am office. If you're here in person, you can offer some, um, drop some money in our tzedakah box in the foyer. As we turn now to our prayer of memory, as I read the name of your loved one, I invite you to rise in their honor and remain standing. Uh, this week we're in the period of Shloshim, the first 30 days of mourning for Barbara Foley, Gloria Zaghi Busina, Charles Chuck Gordon, Regina Konevsky, Martin Katz, and Stan Myers. And this Shabbat marks the yard site, the anniversary of death for Priscilla Snow Algava, Matt Barkin, Al Barkoff, Arthur Carmel, Moselle Cohen, Connie Deck, Sylvia Detkin, Abe H. Donsky, Bernice Bunny Fargostein, Fargotstein, Mitzi Fetterman, Max Fried, Lillian Fried Yamins, Robert Friedenthal, Chaim Futterwhite, Rosalie Gitten, Ruth Ann Bobrov Glader, Esther Gordon, Vera Grossman, Ruben Gall, Leo Gutentag, Ernst Guthoner, David Dreyfus Hinden, Thomas Hirschfield, Charles Holt, Gloria Honig, Sarah Kaplan Swordlow, Nathan Katz, Morris Kaufman, Joseph I. Koppelman, Walter Kramer, Marvin Krasnow, Berta Kropp, Estee Lauder, Linda Leisner, Peter Levine, Carl Lipkin, Shirley Lip, Douglas Longwell, Betsy Lurie, Greta McLeod, Susan Markowitz, Ronald Marks, Sonia Merzer, Joanne, Joan Mesinger, Morris 
Morris Nekrovich, Nekrovich, Solomon Ogus, Emil Pereira, George Powell, Jerome Raffle, Hannah Reback, Arliss Rifkin, Marianne Romani, Salvatore Romani, Marjorie Rothschild, William Rubinchik, Saul Rusakow, Paul Sack, Edward Sack, Mildred Salter, Robert Salter, Gail Schlachter, Sarah Ann Schultz, Dorothy Shapiro, Harriet Scharf, May Silver, Anita Steinecker, Samuel Sussman, Max Unterman, Israel Urban, Monroe H. Waxman, and Alan Zura. If you're remembering someone and are in the first year of mourning, I invite you to rise and share their name at this time. And if there's someone else whose name I haven't mentioned that you'd like to call out, I invite you to rise and share their name. And together we rise as a community of strength and support and solidarity as we read the words of Kaddish, page 294. Yitkadal vi kadash shemei ve'alma divra chirte v'yamlich malchute, v'chayechon uv'yom enechon, v'chaye d'cho beit Yisrael, v'agala u'bizman kari v'imru amen. Yehei shmei raba mevarach le'olam u'almei almaya, yitbarach v'yishtabach v'itpa'ar v'itromam v'itnaseh, v'yitadar v'yitale v'yitala shmei d'kudasha b'richu, Le'ela min ko birchata v'shirata, tush bechata v'nechemata, da amiran be'alma v'imru amen. Yehei shlama raba min shamaya, v'chayim aleinu ve'al ko Yisrael v'imru amen. Osei shalom b'mramav, hu yasei shalom aleinu ve'al ko Yisrael v'imru amen. May the one who creates peace on high bring peace and comfort to all who are bereaved. And we say together, Amen. amen. We will continue with our prayer of peace, that hope of peace, may it come soon. Odiavo shalom aleinu. Here we go. Big thank you to Russell and to Emily for joining us this evening. So wonderful to have you both here lifting up our prayer. Speaking of lifting up, we're seeing our blessing of bread over our flat bread here. <laughs> Flattening down. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hamotzi lechem min haaretz, shabbat. And Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom.